Well, well, well. Well, well, well. I'm back. Good to see you guys once again. Sorry I wasn't able to drop a video yesterday. I had something come up where I had to skip my lunch break yesterday. And as you know, I'm just a guy on my lunch break. So if I don't have a lunch break, then I can't be just a guy on my lunch break, if that makes sense. <laughs> Anyway, I wasn't able to record a video yesterday, so um, if you've watched a couple of my videos, mostly what I talk about on here is Kratom, um, anything surrounding Kratom, um, you know, some people are cool with their relationship with Kratom, if you're cool with it, I'm cool with you being cool with it, if you're not cool with it, I can help there as well. Uh, some people get to a point with something like Kratom where, you know what? I'm just taking too damn much. Or you know what? I don't like the feeling of having to take it multiple times a day and having to sit there and look at the clock and count the amount of hours that I have until I can take my next dose. You know what? I don't like the feeling that if I decide to go out of town for a few days, I have to worry about taking Kratom with me or I'll be experiencing physical withdrawals on my vacation, right? You know, so um, for various reasons, some people often get to the point where they'd like to change their relationship with Kratom, and that's kind of where I come in. Um, as you know, if you've been following me for a while now, you know that I don't land on either side of the fence regarding Kratom. Um, just like I said in, towards the beginning of the video, if you're cool with where you're at, I'm cool with you being cool with where you're at, you know? And some people have you know, backgrounds with much harder, more severe opiates, and, and a lot of people, uh, a lot of users' minds, they have finally found the golden goose. It works for them. They don't take an, ast um, an astronomic amount. You know, they keep their use of Kratom pretty moderate. Um, it helps them with all ex aspects of their life, including, um, you know, helping with uh, anxiety and depression that they might experience. You know, helps with energy drive motivation and it does it does help with uh all of those things but the effects of that just like anything else are somewhat temporary right unless you keep using of course because where the kickback is and where the negative setback of kratom comes in is yeah for those few hours that you're under the influence of kratom you have a mood boost um, you're more happy, you're euphoric, you have more drive, you have more motivation, um, you, you know, you can find enjoyment in just regular, like, little mundane things that life typically, uh, that you do not typically find enjoy, enjoyment in, in life. But, when that three or four hours wears off, and the Kratom runs its course and is out of your system, some people find, especially if they've been using it for a while and dosing multiple times a day, every day, and then weeks pass and months pass, you start to build up what's called a tolerance. And people find that it kind of gets to where, okay, now I'm not enjoying this this much because I'm finding that if I want to take a break from Kratom here and there, and I don't want to just be taking it multiple times a day, then I find myself feeling like shit and aka withdrawals you know also known as withdrawals right um and you know kratom is no different in that sense now the withdrawals um especially the acute withdrawals may not be as severe as harder opiates um and i can attest to that because i've been through withdrawals from like painkillers and stuff like that years and years and years ago um and i will definitely say that kratom is not as bad not as acute not as severe but it all is all about perspective to a person who's never had any experiences with opiate like substances before it might be the worst thing in the world and I've heard people say that the withdrawals from Kratom were horrible were horrific I mean I've heard all kinds of descriptive words so it depends on who you are if you're a person that back in the day you did a cold turkey withdrawal from a serious heroin addiction then you might look at Kratom and be like Oh, that ain't shit. That ain't shit. You should have seen me when I was coming off of heroin. Or in my instance, 
that ain't shit. You know, you should have been where I was when I was coming off of a heavy addiction to Percocets, you know, 15 years ago, that type of thing. Um, but again, it's all about perspective. If you talk to someone who doesn't have any experience with painkillers or heroin or fentanyl or any of these harder opiates, and uh, Kratom is their first time to the rodeo in regards to something that kind of carries an opiate-like uh, nature about it and attaches to those opiate receptors, that person might give you a completely different rundown and a completely different depiction um, and perception of what that withdrawal or perspective about what that withdrawal is or has been to them, right? To them, that shit ain't no fun. That shit ain't no walk in the park. And they don't have anything harder and worse to compare it to. So for them, it can be a bad thing. And it can definitely get to a point for, uh, for a lot of people where they're like, okay, this shit's not cool anymore. So anyway, if you've had any of any experience at all with Kratom, whether you're new to it, you're just starting to take it and you're just trying to get some information on it, or whether you've been taking it for a while and you've kind of now found yourself in a situation where, okay, not quite as cool with my relationship with it anymore, so I wouldn't mind changing a few things, either quitting altogether or maybe just cutting back or doing like a tolerance reset, whatever it is, that's where my channel comes in, okay? judgment-free zone no judgment on here if you're taking it and you're uh you have no desire to stop and you're going to continue to take it no judgment from this guy you know um because again it it all boils down to that individual person making that decision right i'm not here to convince you to convince someone that I've never met, that I've never known, who is also an adult and can make their own free will choices in their own right, that you shouldn't be using Kratom. That's not my purpose here. How could I do that? I don't even know you. I don't even know you. And I also don't know your relationship with Kratom. So with that, um, I wouldn't be presumptuous enough to tell anybody out there, ah, you need to come off that shit. Kratom's bad for you because everyone's relationship with it is different, you know, and there's different levels to addiction. There are users that you could truly consider social users that are not addicted at all. You know, it's much like a person having a couple of drinks on the weekend, going and sitting down with their meal and having two beers and then never and not drinking. There are people that have that sort of relationship with Kratom. Now, why would I come in here and say, oh, 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 that's bad news. No, no, because just because I'm the type of person that has trouble controlling it doesn't mean you're the type of person that has trouble controlling it. It may, may mean something completely different for you. And then there's people who you would consider an, consider it an addiction. You know, they do take it every day. Um, they do have cravings to take it, this and that and the other, but they don't take as much of it or they're okay with only taking it a couple of times a day or like once a day. You know, they're not the type of person that has to just every two or three hours, boom, boom. Oh, well, the feeling's gone away. Oh, boom. You know, there are people like that. And then there's people that if they're taking Kratom, they're taking at least a hundred grams a day per, or more. You know, you really do get a full spectrum, you know, of the type of users. Now, I'm not here to say that, okay, well, the people taking 100 grams a day are, uh, that's obviously bad. Um, and the people who are only taking it every once in a while, that's obviously not a problem. So, you know, just stay where you're at. That's for that person to decide. That's for that person to decide. You know, the first step in, in uh, fixing or changing anything is self-admittance, self-admitting that it's an issue for you. Okay, it's bringing me a lot of negative consequences now, so I need to look at this and readdress it, maybe change my relationship with it. Nobody can tell you that, right? You have to tell yourself that, right? Um, that's why in the... 12-step programs, NAAA, the very first step is what? Admitting that you have an issue. Because if you don't feel like you have an issue, 
then you likewise don't feel like you have anything to change or to fix, right? So it starts there. It starts with you, which is why I'm able to get on here and, and take an objective approach. I don't know what your relationship is with Kratom, right? That's for you to know. That's for you to decide. And again, if you're cool with it um, and you're taking a moderate amount and you don't feel like it's, you know, you're getting a lot of negative consequences from it, and you feel like the benefits that you're getting are far outweighing uh, any negative consequences. The benefits are up here, and the couple negative, tiny negative consequences you get are way down here. Then you may decide, you know, as long as you're being honest, as long as you're doing an honest assess assessment of what Kratom is to you in your life, then, you know, who's to tell you anything different? That's for you to decide, right? Um, but what I will say, um, I'm going to, I need to make this kind of quick. I need to call my wife here. So I'm going to try to make this a little shorter today, um, if it's possible. You guys know me. You know me. I'm very long-winded. I have trouble making these things short, admittedly, okay? So, um, but, but listen, so, uh, this is what I want to say. So if you have a plan, if you are wanting to quit, if you are wanting to change something um, about your relationship with Kratom, the most important thing is to have a plan, okay? Don't just say, oh, you know, I need to cut back to me. I need to cut back. You're right. Uh, no, make a plan. You know, write something down. Um, and for God's sake, know how much you're taking that's one of the first things, you know, I hear people all the time, oh, you know, I would, I probably need to cut back to, but yet they're still keeping the same amount of Kratom on them. They're still, they're still using the powder. They're still not weighing it. They're still just taking whenever they want to take it, whenever the feeling goes away. Oh shit. Well, I'm not feeling it anymore. Let me take some more, right? If you continue with that same train of thought, just willy nilly, then nothing's going to change for you. Sorry nothing's going to change for you. So, um, what I would say first off is know how much you're taking. If you're taking the powder, um, unless you have a scale where you can actually weigh how much you're taking, um, first off, you need to acknowledge how much you are taking. If you're taking the powder, get yourself a scale. Weigh out each time you take the powder, put it on the scale, weigh it up. Okay, this is six grams. Okay. Now, I take it usually, I take it again at 11 o'clock. Put that on there. Oh, okay, that's four more grams, okay? And then at the end of the day, you realize that you're averaging, you know, 30 grams per day or 40 grams per day, you know, taking five grams six different times throughout the day. And, you know, no judgment. People land in all different areas of this. But for once you establish how much you're actually taking, then you have to make a plan. To cut it back right I always recommend starting with your earliest dose first so with the er earliest dose in the morning if what you normally do is six grams well start at five grams okay and then continue the same with the rest of your doses throughout the day do that for three or four days then in the morning dose cut down to four grams on your morning dose okay then go do that for three or four days go back Go down to three grams on your morning dose and just keep doing that until eventually you're just skipping your morning dose altogether, okay? And then once you get to that point, you're like, okay, well, you know, instead of 30 grams now, I'm only taking 24 grams per day. That's a good start, you know? So if you stick with it, you know how much you're taking and you make a plan to cut back every few days, then you can do that. I recommend getting capsules. Um, the, the biggest, best thing about using capsules as opposed to just free powder is the fact that you can easily weigh and know how much you're taking, right? Well, yesterday I took 20 capsules for the day. Today I'm only going to take 18. It's that simple. It's that simple. You know, um, if you, if you're using the free powder, that's very hard to do right 
if you're on the extracts, your tolerance may have gotten a lot higher because the, the alkaloid in the extracts um, is your body is way more efficient at absorbing it because of the um, the form that the liquid comes in and the citric acid and stuff that they put in the extracts. Um, it helps to facilitate in that absorption by your body and there's just a higher amount of the metrogeny alkaloid which is the, the alkaloid that gives you the euphoria, gives you the high from Kratom, okay? So it's one of those things where the more you do it, uh, the more you do the the extracts, the higher, sorry, I got distracted because I'm sitting here at the park and some old man drives by in a truck and when he gets right up to my car, he's like, it's like, dude, I'm here every day, bro. I'm here every day. I'm not trying to shoot the place up. People are just, they don't have anything better to do. He looked at me like I was really just a menace to the neighborhood or something. <laughs> While the other day there were kids over here parked behind me smoking weed but I'm the menace all right anyway side the point that's why I got distracted there um, so if you've been using the extracts a while your tolerance is pretty high so um, some people do actually taper from the extracts meaning instead of taking two extracts per day they knock it down to one and three quarters per day do that for a few days then they'll knock it down to about one and a half extracts per day do that for a few days then they'll knock it down to uh, one and a quarter you know there are ways that you can do it with the extracts but the issue with the extracts for a lot of people besides the tolerance issues is the fact that they're so freaking expensive and uh, people who have gotten hooked on these extracts find that they are just spending an ungodly amount of money trying to maintain that habit and a lot of people need to get out from under the pressure of that immediately right and uh and because that's a real thing right if you're spending all your money if you're spending all your freaking rent money or your mortgage money on mits that's a problem okay so a lot of people just they don't they want to immediately come out from under the financial strain that the extracts are causing them but they also don't want to go into the horrible horrific kratom withdrawals um by just not taking any so the way to do that is to switch over to powder um, and you know it's one of those things where you're probably going to have to take at least 15 grams or more for the first couple of nights depending on how many extracts you were taking because it's going to take a larger amount of powder you know you're probably looking at 20 grams uh, 25 grams maybe of powder is going to equal the alkaloid content that is in one of the extracts does that make sense so when you go to come off the extracts and you put those down and then you try to get on the powder to save yourself the financial burden in the and then to try to taper you're probably going to have to start immediately taking 15 20 grams of the powder right um so that's what i recommend um you can find a lot of information in my last videos a lot of information here in the comments that uh people know a lot about and uh I'm gonna try to finish this off with uh, a couple of comments that I got people here. Um, at two aces says, in the past two weeks, I've went from one MIT 45 a day to one MIT a week. Wow, that's awesome, man. That's significantly less. Past two weeks have been hard. Most of it is mental. Physically, it's sucked also. But I'm getting to that point where I feel like I don't need it anymore. Weaning has been the best way for me every night. I take CBG and CBD for sleep. After this week, I'll start skipping days. You are 100% right. Staying active and keeping yourself busy has been the best way to keep my mind off of it. Uh, at Two Aces, thank you so much for the comment. Um, yeah, no, absolutely. Um, and, and look, this is a perfect example. He says here, I went from one MIT 45 a day to one per week. Um, most people, especially people who have been addicted to an opiate, have what's called an aversion to pain. In other words, any level of discomfort is just like, oh no, I can't take it, I can't take it. You know, part of that is because you've been made to cower under that umbrella of uncomfortability 
uh, of comfortability, rather, that the opiates give you. Because let's be honest, when you're taking something like that, it gives you that feeling of like, ah, you know, you could be sitting on fucking death row, man, and if somebody get, came and gave me two Percocets, they could come back in 15 minutes, but how do you feel right now knowing you're about to be executed? Well, you know, it's not that bad, to be honest. You know, I've lived a good life, you know. <laughs> I mean, it literally gives you that sort of feeling. So uh, people find that when they've been using it for a while, um, things that are painful, things that are uncomfortable, uh, become more uncomfortable if you don't have that in your system, if you don't have that opiate in your system. Does that make sense? Um, but the truth of the matter is... Uh, Kratom is one of those things that if you just stop and do a complete cold turkey, believe it or not, it's doable. And believe it or not, it is not so bad that you just can't do it. I've done it. Um, I did it about a year and a half ago. I was on the MITs and I was taking a decent amount, a decent amount, probably uh, averaging maybe two of them per day. And, um, and I've told this story before. Um, I was laid off from a job that I had been working at for seven years. First time in my life I was ever laid off from a job. But the good news is, because I had worked for them for so long, they paid me severance pay. So I got two months of severance pay after leaving the job. So for that two months, I wasn't having to work every day. I was you know, in the process of looking for another job. But I was getting paid a salary still from my job that I got laid off from. Does that make sense? And, um, and I had been hooked on those MIT 45s and I said to myself, this is a good time to go ahead and get the hell off of these. You know, I don't have to work every day. This is before I had my, my baby recently. So, you know, I didn't have that responsibility. I didn't have to get up and be at work and be responsible for a job every day. Um, I, I was looking for another job, but I had not yet found one. So, uh, I thought to myself, you know what, this is a perfect time, perfect time to come off of it. And, and I did. And I did it cold turkey. I didn't do any of this tapering shit. I did it cold turkey. And just like Two Aces says here, I was very active. I was working out every day. I was jogging. I was hitting the punching bag. I was lifting. I was doing push-ups. Just all these different things um, to just kind of harden myself up a little bit, you know, since you're going through something tough like that um when you make when you purposely put yourself into the fire and make the rest of your life hell when you're going with going through something like that it makes that thing seem it's not quite that bad it's not quite as bad you know what's bad is doing these three rounds of jump rope for four minutes straight each round that's bad you know what's bad putting this 12 pound weighted vest on and jogging six miles on hills that's bad and when you start to do something like that you know in retrospect the kratom and the withdrawal feelings and stuff like that seem to not be quite so insurmountable they seem to be not quite as mountainous not as big not as bad you know because you're putting yourself through the fire in uh, other areas and I will admit the worst part about it was the lack of sleep. Uh, definitely uh, was struggling with having energy there for about a good week and a half. Um, no energy, uh, or not a lot, but uh, very little energy, very little dopamine, kind of having the anhedonia, like hard to find pleasure in anything. You know, I was struggling with that. Um, the biggest component was the insomnia, not being able to sleep. That was the biggest component of uh, doing the cold turkey withdrawal from the MIT but um but you know what it was doable I survived it I mean not gonna lie the night times sucked ass you know laying there at night and not being able to keep still and you 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 know you're uncomfortable in this position so you flip over and say okay yeah yeah no, that's good that's good that's good three seconds passes and you're like ah Damn, that's not good. That's not good. No, no, no. Let me get over this way. Let me put maybe put my left hand right here, and then my right leg up, and I turn like this. My left, my right foot inward just a little bit. Let me hold my tongue like this. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Oh no, that's not good. You know, I mean, it's just, it's a constant. Uh, 
It's almost like you do not feel at home in your own skin. It almost feels like you're inside the body of someone else and you're just trying to jump out. Um, it, it's a pretty bad feeling. It's a pretty bad feeling. And for people who have never gone through some sort of opiate sort of withdrawal, it's very tough to explain to people. And I've had my wife tell me before, you know, my wife knows everything about me. Um, and the couple of times that she's been with me that I've gone through withdrawals, um, which has only been twice um, that I've gone through them with her, and I've been married to her for 10 years. Um, the the couple of times that I was going through it, I, I remember her a couple of times saying something like, well, I'm sorry, babe, well, why don't you try some, uh, you want some chamomile tea? I supposed to be able to help people sleep. I'm like, chamomile tea. <laughs> you know, God bless her. I mean, she's only she's only trying to help me, so I can't get mad at her about it. But it's one of those where I was just like, thank you, but you don't understand. And all you guys listening to me now who have had experience with opiates or have been through some sort of withdrawal, you're laughing along with me. You're like, yeah, she don't know what the fuck she's talking about. <laughs> but, uh, you know, good on her for caring um, and good on her for the fact that she's never gone through an opiate withdrawal. You know, that's good for her. Um, but, you know, people don't understand. It, it's not just that you can't get sleepy. You get sleepy. Oh, you're sleepy as hell. Uh, but your body will not let you doze off, you know, and, and it's as soon as you start to doze off is when the, and it, it's, it's literally, I liken it to, you hadn't slept for three days, you're tired of shit, you lay down, you go to sleep, as soon as you start to doze off to sleep, somebody stand at the foot of your bed, shakes your leg, oh, okay, wake up, wake up, wake up, and you wake up, oh, and he's, Lay back down again. God, I'm so tired. I just want to go to sleep. I just want to go to sleep. Soon as you start to doze off at the foot of your bed again. Wake up, wake up, wake up. I mean, it's just an incessant, you know, it just almost like it never ends. Good news is it does end. It does end. And for me, after about a week and a half, um, is at the point where if I went cold turkey, when I did cold turkey, Around a week and a half to two weeks is when I really started to notice an improvement, right? And it really is one of those things where one night you'll finally just go to sleep and you'll wake up and you'll realize, oh shit, look at your clock, like I just slept for two hours. Damn, that's an improvement, that's good. And then the next night you'll be like, damn, I slept for three hours. Yes, I'm getting there. Then the next night, Damn, I slept for four and a half hours last night. And then finally, after the fourth or fifth night, after you finally start getting a little sleep, you'll finally just sleep the whole night through. And uh, and that's usually how it is. You know, it usually doesn't take any longer than probably 10 days uh, if you did a cold turkey to completely reset like your sleep patterns and all that. And I, I talk about the sleep patterns the most because the other shit, the daytime stuff, the low energy, the some people get diarrhea from it, the anhedonia, the stuff like that. There are things that you can do. That for me was secondary. I mean, it was bad, but I can. It's doable. I can handle that. It was the night times, not being able to sleep, and then having to get up and go do something the next day. That's the part that I just can't do. I can't do. Uh, Got to have my sleep, you know. Um, which is why I did the cold turkey when I did. You know, at that period of time where I was actually getting paid, but I wasn't having to work, okay? But anyway, hope that helps somebody out there. I gotta go. Um, this is gonna cut off from me, because I got, I was gonna cut off on me, because I've got a lot of pictures and shit in my phone as well, um, that I've been taking of my son recently, so, um, I love you guys. Hope you have a great rest of your day. Hit that subscribe button. Like the video and leave a comment down below. Let me know what your story is. And I will see you guys next time. Corey is out. Peace.